Hello everyone, welcome to the third part of the chapter Geomorphic Processes and Landforms of the Earth. Today we will discuss Block Mountain, Volcanic Mountain and the Relic Mountain. Let's take a look about the Block Mountain. Block Mountain is actually the mountain in which any particular part or crustal blocks have been uplifted vertically with the earth's surface known as the Block Mountain. Actually Block Mountains are the product of the faulting in which any crustal blocks have been divided into three parts by the two parallel faults. That is the most important concept about the fault theory of the block mountain formation where the two parallel faults divide any crustal blocks into three part or segment and if any part or segment has been uplifted vertically and form the mountain that is known as the block mountain. As we all know that if any crustal blocks have been uplifted or subsided vertically with the earth's surface that is known as the epidogenic processes. So we can say by epidogenic process if any crustal blocks have been uplifted vertically and form the mountain that is known as the block mountain. There are three processes of the methods by which block mountains are formed. The number one, suppose if any crustal blocks have been divided into three parts by the two parallel faults and the middle one of that particular two parallel faults have been uplifted vertically and form the mountain that is known as the block mountain and the two adjacent area which has been remained static they are known as the graben. That is the most important term about the block mountain formation where the middle part of the crustal blocks of the two parallel faults have been uplifted vertically and form the mountain known as the block mountain and the two adjacent area which has been remained static known as the graven. Now come to the second way by which block mountains can be formed. Suppose the two adjacent area of the two parallel faults have been subsided vertically and the middle one remains static. So apparently it looks like that the middle one has already been uplifted. Actually it is not. So the middle one which has already been upthrust, they are known as the block mountain or the host. Now come to the third way uh, process by which we can say the block mountains are formed. Suppose the middle one of the two parallel faults have been subsided vertically and they are formed in rift valley. That is the most important thing if the middle one of the two parallel faults of the crustal blocks have been subsided vertically then the middle one which has been subsided known as the rift valley and the remaining two adjacent area which has been the static or the up thrust they are known as the block mountain. Now take a look about the diagram by which we can explain the formation of the block mountain where in the number one diagram we can say that the middle part of the crustal blocks of the two parallel faults have been uplifted vertically and they are formed the host of the block mountains and the remaining two adjacent area is known as the graven. But in the second diagram, we can say the middle one or the middle part of the crustal blocks have been subsided vertically. And this is the most important difference between the two diagrams where one. in the number one, the middle part has been uplifted that is known as the host or the block mountain and in the second diagram, the middle part has been subsided and that is known as the rift valley. And in the second diagram, the remaining two adjacent area which is static that is known as the up thrust or the block mountains. So these are the different type of processes by which block mountains have been formed. Now take a look about the features of the block mountains. Block mountains are actually the steep sided flat top because the crustal blocks have been uplifted vertically so, so they shouldn't have any mountain peaks or lofty peaks like the fold mountains or the other mountains. And also these block mountains are not stretched as long as the other mountains and covering the extended area over the earth's surfaces. And the third one, the block mountains are all, always associated with the landforms like the graven and the rift valley. Now there are some important examples of the block mountains, black forest of the Germany, Borges of the France and Satpuras of India. These are the important examples of the block mountains of the whole world. And now come to the rift valley, the Narmada and Tapti, the most important example about the rift valley of the India and the great rift valley which is 6000 km in length, this is situated in Africa, is the longest rift valley of the whole world. Now take a look about the volcanic mountain in which the mountains which has been formed by the eruptions of the magma definitely from the earth's interior and deposited over the earth's surface in the conical shape known as the volcanic mountain. In that case of volcanic mountain, magma will be erupted from the earth's interior and deposited over the earth's surface and generally in conical shape or in triangular shape, they are known as the volcanic mountain. 
and these volcanic mountains have been formed by the eruptions of magma and this magma may be coming from the earth's interior or maybe from the earth's asthenosphere or from the local magma chamber. There is a basic difference between the asthenosphere and the local magma chamber. Now take a look about the diagram where we can see the magma chamber has been pointed out. These magma chambers are the local magma chambers. So we all know that the main mag source of the magma of the earth's interior is the asthenosphere and also there are some area within the earth's interior where magma has been trapped between the two crustal layers and this trapped magma is known as the magma chamber and from that local magma chamber if the magma will be erupted and they generally form the volcanic mountain. This magma chamber may be connected with the asthenosphere, maybe not. Now come to the different part of the diagram in of the volcano where you can see the magma will be erupted to a definite part or track that is known as the tunnel. The main part of the volcano through which the huge amount of magma will be erupted they are known as the primary crater. We can see in the diagram the primary crater has been pointed out at the top of the volcano where actually the huge amount of magma will be erupted. There are maybe other ways by which magma can be erupted. They are also known as the secondary crater. So these are the important part of the volcano where the primary crater is the actual source or the main source of the magma eruption and the secondary crater this is the secondary source by which also to some extent magma or the lava can be erupted and the tunnel the track through which magma has been erupted and the magma chamber these are known as actually the local magma chamber this magma chamber may be connected with the asthenosphere or maybe not now there are some basic features about the volcanic mountain where we can see the mountains are actually the conical shape or the dome shape they are formed by the igneous rock materials the iron or the silica are the main contents of the magma or the volcanic mountain they are generally steep sided the height of the volcanic mountains may be raised by the continuous eruption and the height of the mountains are increasing gradually there are two types of eruption one is the explosive eruption another one is the fissure eruption in case of explosive eruption magma will erupt from the earth's interior with a certain explosion and deposited over the earth's surface generally these magma are low in density and acidic in nature and such type of volcanic eruption always took place over the earth's surface where we can see the landforms are almost conical shape or triangulated shape landform so now come to the fissure eruption in case of fissure eruption magma will erupt from the earth's interior and deposited over the earth's surface over a vast extended area and in that case magma should erupt silently through the cracks of the rocks and in that case the magma are basic in character and they are high in density generally such type of eruption always took place for a two or three phases for example the Deccan trap is a example of such type of eruption where we can see there are three phases of eruption over the Indian Peninsula. Now come to the, the classifications of volcanic mountain. Volcanic mountain can be classified into three categories. One is the active volcano, another one is the dormant volcano and the last one is the extinct volcano. Now come to the active volcano. The active volcano means the volcanoes which are experiencing with frequent eruptions. That means the eruptions are occurred frequently. They are called the active volcano. Active volcano can be classified further into two categories. One is the incessant, another one is the intermittent. In case of the incessant active volcano, such type of volcanoes are experiencing with the very frequent eruptions. Stromboli of Italy or Cotopaxi of the equator, these are known as the important example of the incessant active volcano. And we all know that the Stromboli is known as the lighthouse of the Mediterranean Sea. Now come to the intermittent. Intermittent active volcano is also another type of volcano where we can see the volcanic eruptions are occurred very often. So these are known as the intermittent active volcano. Mount Etna of Sicily is known as the intermittent active volcano. Now come to the dormant volcano. 
dormant volcano is such a type of volcano where we can see the such volcanic mountain are always experienced with volcanic eruption in the past and there is a sound possibility of eruption in future also so these are known as the dormant volcano where fujiyama of japan and krakatoa of indonesia are the important examples of the dormant volcano now come to the extinct volcano extinct volcano means this type of volcanic mountain is not experiencing with the volcanic eruption in the recent past and there is no such type of type of possibility of eruptions in the future also known as the extinct type of volcano mount popa of myanmar is also another important extinct volcano now take a look about the major volcanic belts of the world there are the important three major belts of the world one is the pacific ring of fire another one is the mid atlantic belt another one is the mid continental belt in terms of plate tectonic theory these all major volcanic belt can be explained by the plate movement and in that case of plate movement we can see any subduction zone or any destructive plate boundary is always experiencing with the such type of volcanic eruption in that case pacific ring of fire is the number one where we can see the maximum volcanic mountains are situated where the almost every one of that pacific ring of fire are active volcano and the huge amount of volcanic eruptions took place in that particular region in terms of the whole earth now there is a pacific ring of fire a pictorial representation where we can see a eurasia plate situated in the northwestern side and the indo australia plate is situated in the southwestern side north american plate is situated in the northeastern side and the south american plate is situated in the southeastern side now this is ring of fire or the pacific plate which is known as the oceanic plate definitely formed by the silica and magnesium and it is a high density plate and in comparison with the north america south america eurasia and the indo australian plate so all these plates are formed by the silica aluminium and having a low density whereas in comparison the pacific plate is a silica magnesium with a high density now the pacific plate has been subducted along the southwestern part with the indo australian plate and in the northwestern part with the eurasian plate in the northeastern part with the north america plate and in southeastern part with the south america plate such pacific ring of fire is experiencing with the 80% of the world volcanoes and these world volcanoes are situated in the circum pacific ring of fire these red dots along the pacific region is actually almost covering the entire part and forming a arc shape and that's why it is known as circum pacific ring of fire almost a ring shape or the arc shape there are different continental plates are situated in the different part of the pacific plate where you can see the eurasia in the northwest and the indo australia in the southwest north american plate in the northeast and the south american plate in the southeast directions and these plates are actually the formed by the silica aluminium and the pacific plate is formed by the silica magnesium so the pacific plate is subducted under these continental plates and huge amount of volcanic eruptions took place and which create huge number of active volcano and these active volcanoes are generally incessant type some important examples of such active volcanoes are fujiyama of japan krakatoa of indonesia and kotopaxi of andes these are the important active volcano situated in the circum pacific ring of fire now come to the residual mountain or the relic mountain residual mountain or the relic mountain is a such a type of mountain which has been formed by the process of erosion or denudation that is the basic difference between the residual mountain and the other type of mountain where there is a formational process but here in the residual mountain there is a process of erosion by which the mountain has been formed it is actually the owning down of the soft rocks and as a result the hard resistant rock remains static or left standing as a mountain and called the residual mountain or the relic mountain now there are two types of processes by which that kind of mountains have been formed 
one is the from the old fold mountain another one is from high plateaus some old fold mountains are there over the earth surface which have been eroded by different erosional agents like the river glacier or wind or other weathering and by which the hard resistant rock remains static and having a definite height that known as the residual mountain or relic mountain formed from the old fold mountains generally aravalli ural are the prime example of such old fold mountains where we can see that these mountains have been formed in a ancient past and right now they are experiencing with the only erosion and as a result of that the erosional rate is higher than the formational rate or rather the formation process has already been stopped and the erosional rate is continuing so that's why the rate of the degradation or the rate of the decreasing of the height is rapidly occurred now come to the high plateaus from the high plateaus also mountains can be formed for example the deccan plateau deccan plateau also had a certain height during the ancient age or pleistocene age and right now by erosional processes or denudational process such plateaus are also experiencing with certain type of erosion and as a result mohakal and mohadev these are the hills are also showing the examples of the relic mountain formed from the high plateaus there is a diagram where we can see dotted line which is actually showing the original surface and right now the continuing line showing the eroded surface it means the mountain has already been eroded by the denudational or erosional processes these mountains are actually most of the erosional mountains are irregular in shape because the rate of erosion varies time to time year to year so that's why these are very irregular in shape in the erosional mountain the top is generally flat or rounded or dome shape because different type of erosional processes and the drainage patterns have been formed over such type of mountains and that's why the top either flat or the rounded in shape these erosional mountains are very old in age and they are ancient in origin because actually these mountains either formed from the old plateaus or from the old fold mountains and as a result these are formed by the ancient rock strata so they have the ancient rock origin and they have gentle slope because rugged terrain already been eroded or smooth by the erosional processes and they don't have any lofty peaks so these are the basic features of the erosional mountains or the residual mountains thank you